Welcome everyone to the 16 months progress report until 2023 December. My PhD topic is the polymers in dentistry. My name is Vira Grona and I am a PhD student at the Department of Prostodontics, Samavais University, and my supervisor is Zoltan Gezi and my scientific methodology supervisor is Kato Kalaman. My mission is to research the usage of polymers in dentistry, mainly focusing on chitosan, and my vision is to find some new alternatives that can be used in clinical dentistry. I have two projects. The first one is the effect of chitosan on the number of Streptococcus mutans in saliva. It started in 2022 September, and the second one is the effect of chitosan on the number of Enterococcus fulcalis in the root canal. It, uh, it started in 2022 November. So the first project, as I mentioned, started in 2022 September. Uh, let's talk a bit about the background. Streptococcus mutans is a facultatively anaerobic gram-positive coccus which can be commonly found in the human oral cavity and the first one who wrote down an association between this bacteria and caries was uh, Clark in 1924. Uh, this bacteria has a very uh, important role in the development of dental caries by forming an EPS-rich and low-pH milieu, and uh, according to WHO, uh, it is estimated that globally almost 2 billion people suffer from caries every day. So polycationic polymers are antimicrobial polymers which has growth inhibiting and destructive properties and our aim was to investigate the efficacy of uh, chitosan on the streptococcus mutans. So the clinical question was that how efficient is chitosan in reducing the number of streptococcus mutants in saliva? Here you can see the PICO that we used and our hypothesis was that chitosan actually reduces the number of bacteria and uh, we used this search key and all in all we got 6258 articles and out of these uh, at the end of the selection process we got four full eligible articles. So our outcome was the number of streptococcus mutants uh, in saliva, which can be measured in CFU per milliliter. And this outcome is highly important because this bacteria has a very important role in the development of dental caries. As you can see, three studies were included in this analysis. And if you see the baseline values, we can say that there were quite high heterogeneity between them. Uh, I think the reason for this could be that in every single individual person the oral bacterial flora is different and this flora uh, is influenced by several factors throughout life but all in all we can say that in every case there were a decreasement of uh, the bacteria number. So maybe you can see a little bit better here on this slide. So in the control group uh, we found a 24% reducement and in the intervention group we found an 83% reducement. So the strength of our analysis is that all of the articles were randomized control trials. This is the first meta-analysis in the topic and we used a pre-registered PROSPERO protocol. But we have some limit limitations, of course. Uh, actually, the imputed standard deviations and correlations uh, have to be used by our statistician, and only three studies were available. So as a conclusion, we can say that based on our meta-analysis, chitosan has some antibacterial properties, in, uh, and it can reduce the number of streptococcus mutants as an ingredient of chewing gum, but further research is, of course, required for more significant results. As a summary, we can say uh, for the implication for practice is to use chitosan as a prim primary prevention tool for carriers, and uh, the implication for research is uh, we should have more clinical and in vitro studies uh, to be done to have more reliable results. Uh, my manuscript uh, was accepted in the journal International Journal of uh, Molecular Sciences. This is a D1 journal with an impact factor of 5.6. 5, 5. 
My second project is the effect of chitosan on the number of Enterococcus fucalis. This is also a systematic review and a meta-analysis, and I am planning to submit it in 2024 April. Now let's talk a bit about uh, the background. Nowadays there are three main reasons for losing a tooth. The first group is carious, the second reason is endodontic diseases, and the third reason is periodontal diseases. My, my first project was about the first reason, the second project will be about the endodontic diseases, Enterococcus focalis, and in the future we are planning to do a third project also about the periodontal diseases. Enterococcus focalis is a gram-positive coccus, which is capable of growing in both anaerobic and aerobic environments. And this bacteria is commonly detected in asymptomatic endodontic lesions. Nowadays, the gold standard material for irrigation is sodium hypochlorite. So actually, this is uh, one of the material which is mostly effective against Enterococcus focalis. But uh, our question is that could chitosan be a new alternative for this uh, irrigation material? So this was our clinical question. How efficient is chitosan in reducing the number of Enterococcus focalis? And uh, here you can see the PICO that we used. We had two outcomes. One of them is uh, the number of bacteria in CFU per milliliter and the other one was the inhibition rate. And our hypothesis was that chitosan reduces the number of bacteria. We used this search key for systematic search. And all in all, we got 889 articles. And after the selection processes, we got 10 full eligible articles. Because of the lack of time, I will only talk about one outcome. It will be the inhibition rate. As you can see, we used two subgroups. The first one used low concentrations and the second one high concentrations, also in chitosan and in sodium hypochlorite groups. So uh, with the low concentrations, you can see that uh, two articles said that sodium hypochlorite was in favor. Only one article said that uh, chitosan was in favor. But with the high concentrations, it turned upside down. And uh, actually two articles said that chitosan was in favor and only one that sodium hypochlorite was in. So we can say that with the increment of... Uh, of uh, concentrations, uh, chitosan was uh, actually, uh, we can say that it was as much as good as sodium hypochlorite. So what are the strengths of this analysis? First, that we used a pre-registered PROSPERO protocol. And second, this is the first analysis in this topic and this is a novelty in the literature. And the limitation is that the study methods were not completely consistent in all articles, so this is uh, why we would need uh, a consistent uh, study method. So as a conclusion, we can say that there is a tendency that chitosan would be a great alternative to sodium hypochlorite as an effective irrigation agent. And the implication for practice is that chitosan could be a promising agent in the future for uh, root canal irrigation. And the implication for research is that we made a recommended measurement design for the future to have a homogeneous uh, results and uh, for the clinicians to have to have a clearer decision. And uh, this is the one reason that now I am recording my video that my daughter Aurora was born soon after my first publication, actually now in December. So this is why I am here online. And uh, I think you can see it because my face is on the presentation, but now I am still working on the second project manuscript and I really hope that I can, uh, I can finish it as soon as possible. But right now I am with my little one and uh, trying to do my best. So as an overview, uh, I am planning to submit the second project in uh, April. So I would like to thank you for your attention 
uh, with a quote from Jane Austen, it isn't what we say or think that defines us, but what we do. Thank you so much.